Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video, I'm going to show you how I created the entire functionality of the user's login and then accessing some of the protected routes inside our Next.js application, sorry, Next.js application, right? The authentication is already something which we have covered in the Sanctum implementation. So the idea here is that when the user is entering the username and password. So let's just say I'm doing this. My password is password at the rate one, two, three. At this point, now watch carefully. What will happen is I'll make that network call. Let me clear this out as well. When I do login, I get a status code of 200, but the response has that token. That token is something which I am storing inside a cookie. And the subsequent calls are going to be done using the bearer token. So if I come over here, request header has my authorization bearer this. So this is what we are going to cover in this video. This is what I have done so far. So let me walk you through the code changes. So the first thing obviously is if I show you on inside my package.json, I have JS cookie. So the JS cookie NPM package allows me to create a cookie, a client side cookie, which is basically responsible for storing the token. So the name is token value is this, and then I am writing the rest of the code so that I can handle that data. All right. Now, obviously there is a login page. If there is a login, there has to be a page. The page is quite straightforward. There is this layout card and login form very straight you know very consistent with what we have done so far so let's look at what we are doing inside our login form so inside our login form i have this thing let me quickly first show you the markup so i have a formic element which has initial values and on submit initial values is basically this email and password it is of type i values which i have defined over here okay and I have an on submit, which is basically responsible for the handling of the form submit, right? Then I'm getting the errors and touched. There are these form elements, pretty straightforward. I have this form element custom component. Inside that I have the field. So this is my email field. The next one is my password field. So these are the two form elements. Let me close them out. And then I have my button on click of this button the form gets submitted so when the form is getting submitted i am making an http call now there are certain changes that i have done inside my http service i will walk you through them but first let me show you how it was previously so previously i had get post delete and there was one function called get endpoint which would give me the entire url but then what had happened is I also want to I wanted to add interceptors so that I can console or rather handle something when there is an authentication error and when I have a token inside my cookie I want that all the get and post requests automatically get the bearer token so I have made certain changes inside the HTTP service. Let's look at that. So first of all, if you see, I have get post delete, but this get endpoint is missing. I have removed it and I have added this private function called API. Now API inside this, what I'm doing is I created an Axios instance and I set the base URL. So with this in place, things become better. I mean, I would say that, yes, you know, this was not one of the best implementation because now my entire Axios instance knows that this is my basic U, uh, base URL. Okay. The better way. Plus it gives me control over these interceptors as well. Okay. So I have this response interceptor where if any response is 401, fine. For now I am doing a console error, but I can literally do a lot of things with that. But for now, yeah, you are not logged in is something which will be shown. But then the most important one is the request interceptor. Inside the request interceptor, I get the cookie token, 
rather the value of the token from the cookie. Now, if I find the token and the token is not empty and my config headers are set, I add this authorization header with the value as bearer space, the actual token. And that is the reason if you see my network request over here has that request header with authorization set to this bearer token. Okay. So these are the two changes and basically then what happened is previously I was doing something like endpoint equals HTTP service get endpoint. Instead of that, I'm doing this API. This is also working. So I don't need to do the HTTP endpoint kind of a call. This does work. That's what I saw. Right. Um, but yeah, the API instance is here and then on the API instance, I am running the get URL, the post URL, stuff like that. Okay. All right. So this is done. And based on that, I'm obviously getting the headers. Now let me close this out. So I have made a post request to the login URL with these things, you know, the email password and the device name right now is hard coded to web. If I get a status code of 200, then I set the cookie. Okay. This is where you know, the first time I'll get the token and then I reset form and I take the user to the homepage. That's what is happening over here. So if I now, so basically when I logged in, I came to the homepage, right? Now there is one more thing which I have done. Um, so you know, the redirection to the homepage is there, but for example, if I'm on this particular page and if I delete this cookie now, basically the user is no more an authenticated user, right? So if I now refresh, it takes me to the login URL. How is that happening? Well, the best place I could figure out was the app.tsx file. Inside that, I first got, I first got the router instance using the use router hook. Inside my use effect, I created an array of guest routes. And then I'm saying that if the current route is not included in here, okay, then come over here. So basically these are protected routes. I take the token. If I see that the token is not set or if the token is empty, I take the user to the user login, user slash login page. That's how I am forcing the users to be logged in. For example, slash URLs will take me back to the login page, right? And if I now log in again, I am over here. I can go to the links page as well. And this time I don't have any problem. So yes, this implementation was as simple as that. As you can see, I have this login page, the login form, a little bit of change in my HTTP service. And yeah, that's about it guys. That's how the entire thing was done. Now in the next video, I'm going to add more features. Like obviously the logout is there. And then I will try to also work on the concept of use context and you know, the create context and use context so that I am able to handle the user object and pass it to different components. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I'll be trying to do. So that's about it guys. If you like this video and this series, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.